Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, we're continuing our discussion of section 2.3, continuity. The topic for this video is positive and negative behavior of functions and their graphs. This is not discussed in the book. It's actually definitely a prerequisite concept for this course. But it is such an important concept for this course, it, it plays such a big role later that it's worth having a bit of review and doing some examples here now. Start with recalling the definition of positive and negative. So a number is positive if it's greater than zero. And of course, to say a number is negative means that the number is less than zero. What would greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to, to zero mean? Well, there's a name that's often used for greater than or equal to zero, and that name is non-negative. But we're, in this course, going to be interested in these two things, positive numbers and negative numbers. Our first example, we're given the graph of a function and we're asked three questions. The first question is, where is f of x equal to zero? So that is, where is y equal to zero? Well, we can color those points in red. And if you uh, count over to these points, let's see, this is those four x values. The next question is, where is f of x greater than 0? So that means that y is greater than 0. So that means that the graph is above the x-axis. Now we could, uh, we could color the graph, but it might be simpler to just color the part of the x-axis where that is true. So I'm going to color it green. You could think of this as like grass growing above the level of the ground. So there's an interval where the graph is above the axis. Here's another one over here. And here's another one over here. So there are three intervals. So we're supposed to express our answer in interval notation. So that would look like this. So there are our intervals. Remember these uh, kinds of intervals with in infinity symbols. Uh, mean, this, this symbol means simply that x is greater than 10. So this interval here on the right corresponds to this chunk of the graph. And there is our set union symbol, these things that look like u's. They're not u's, they're uh, not supposed to be u's. This is called the union so the set on which f of x is greater than 0 is this union of three intervals. So this is called interval notation. Our book is actually sloppy about this. The book says um, find the interval where f of x is greater than 0 or something like that. Well, this is technically not an interval. It's a union of three intervals. All right, the last question for this example is find uh, is where is f of x less than 0? Well, I'm going to color that blue. This corresponds to y less than 0. And so this means the graph is below the axis. So I'm going to color the part of the x-axis where this is happening. I'm going to color it blue because it's like being underwater. So those two intervals are the intervals where the graph is below the axis. Uh, in interval notation, I would describe that set as That's it for that example. Let's go on to the next example. In example two, we're given some um, specifications for a function. Uh, these three things. The function is known to be continuous for all real numbers. The y values are greater than zero on these two intervals. And the y values are less than zero on these two intervals. So our first job is to sketch a possible graph of f. Well, so I'm going to start by 
uh, indicating those intervals uh, on the number line. So I'll make a number line. And the important points are x equals negative 3, x equals 2, x equals 7. So I'm not going to draw the graph yet. I'm just going to simply indicate the given information. So I'm going to indicate the regions where f of x is greater than 0 by drawing a little green stripe on the, on the top side of this number line to indicate that the graph is above the axis, like grass growing above the above the level of the earth and the uh, portions of the axis where the graph is below the axis I'll in indicate in blue now I'm going to skip the rest of part a for now and I want to go to, to part B because part B is actually one of the reasons we're doing this notice that nothing is mentioned here about x-intercepts So how are we supposed to answer this question about the x-intercepts? Well, the key is actually this idea that f is known to be continuous. So this is the, the, the sort of important concept that's one of the reasons that we're doing this example. This function is continuous, so the only way that the graph can get from above the axis to below the axis is by touching the x-axis. So that tells us that at these numbers where the, the lines change from green to blue or blue to green, those are places where the graph changes from being above the axis to below the axis or from below the axis to above. So at those points, the graph has to touch the x-axis. I'm going to color those red. Now, so those are definitely three x-intercepts. Are there any other x-intercepts? Well, no, because we're told that at all the other x values, the graph is staying above the axis or staying below the axis. So that's, that's it for x-intercepts. So for question B, the x-intercepts are x equals negative 3, 2, and 7. Now let's go back to question A and let's sketch our graph. We need a graph that's above the axis, and then below the axis, and then above, then below. Now we don't have to be precise because we're not really given anything else to go on. There is an example of a graph that has those properties. That's the end of the video. Thank you.